Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to take a look in on the DIY stacked bin. Now I made this myself some time ago and I did it with, ooh, cloud of fungus gnats. That's not cool. Need more spiders. So anyway, um, I made this bin myself out of three 10 gallon totes that I you can see um, here, no, you can see here that I've put uh, hot glue and some screen to cover the bigger holes to get good ventilation. And then there's holes in the middle of each layer in the bottom so the worms can go up and down. Alrighty, well, I did have a plant sitting in here, which is why there's a huge dent here. and. Uh, I don't think there was any tampering by outside critters other than gnats. So let's take a look and see what we've got going on today. Um, pretty crunchy on the top, even though I had that uh, bubble wrap on there. Now this is a mix of my red wigglers, my blue worms, and my European night crawlers. There's probably about a pound, pound and a half of worms in this bin. So we've refreshed this pretty recently and so the bedding is going to be real new looking and real recognizable as shredded cardboard and paper. So let's just get this blended up here. Um, considering where the gnats came from, I'm pretty sure that the feeding is over here. I just figured we'd take a look and see what the worms are doing and make sure we get the moisture even throughout. Get some of that dry stuff and, and put it underneath got a avocado pit, more avocado pit. All right, this is where we're getting into the feeding, I think. Let's take a look and see what we've got done. Okay, so I'm not getting a proper worm ball. I think these were leeks. That's kind of in the onion family. Um, looks like they're they're trying to get into it, but I think it's a lot more fibrous than a regular onion. I don't really smell that super oniony smell or anything, but I think that it's just maybe got a lot more fiber. But the worms are definitely making good castings here. But as I was saying in the beginning, I think that, you know, this is a good way to start out a worm bin if you want to do on your own. It only cost about $25 the you know you've got extra screen laying around and uh, a little bit of time get some drill bits poke some holes in things and it's a good way to start it's a good way to manage moisture because there's different layers that can sop up the different um, the moisture so you can always have a little bit of a buffer there but it looks like this part has got more than enough uh, food, but I am going to move it over. I'm going to take the food and I'm going to move it to the drier side of the bin. Maybe we can get control of those gnats. I didn't really see them flying around the basement, but they sure did take flight when I moved that bubble wrap. All right, let's take a look at the next layer down. All right, so looking in on this layer, it does look a little compressed, but the worms don't seem to mind. They also seem to have good moisture down here. And uh, I can't remember who it was that predicted, but springtails seem to like cooler weather. Looks like we have the grapes down here. Nice blue, pretty mold, which is not good if you're allergic to penicillin. Nice you know, diffused amount of worms in here though. The basement is currently 66 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's a little warmer in here than it has been the last couple of days. But this bin is closer to the, uh, the wall, so maybe it's not as warm as that. But this is getting a little damp in here, or maybe it's just not drying out, one of the two. We'll cover those grape stems back up. 
there's not really a chance of any outside bugs getting in this layer. It's completely covered by the one above. But uh, yeah, I think it's doing okay. Let's look at the, the bottom layer here. I think we had decided to put some of the food that is super long term and put it down here in the in the bottom so that it can stay moist. And uh, that didn't really go as planned, did it? Look at that, it's awfully dry. Break it up and make it smaller and we'll incorporate that in. But uh, this bin does have a lot of uh, helpers in it. So we've got the little isopods, the little roly polies. Let me know in the comments below, what do you call these little things here? Um, pill bugs or roly polies or isopods. But there seems to be quite a bit of them. Moisture's doing really good down here. Got the corn cobs. No worm surprise. Let's see if we can split one long ways. Nope, just uh, springtails. So the l hole that goes down to this layer is only a sixteenth of an inch, and that's only a couple millimeters. Um, so I think the worms come down here when they're tiny, and then they get trapped. So at some point, I usually take the finished castings and whatnot from down here and move it to the top and then this can kind of be a haven for little tiny worms where they can hang out, find things to eat, etc. That mango is, or not mango, that's a avocado. So I'm going to make sure that all of this stuff is buried really good, but I think I'm going to add a little bit more bedding in here. That way this stuff has a little bit more bandwidth to absorb moisture and also keep this long-term food nice and covered. Just give them a nice diffused uh, bunch of that. And this is off the top of the bin, so it's a little bit drier. So that will help with the moisture, I think, a little bit. Keep this from getting too soupy down here, which is one of the problems that I do have. Because this was an, originally the layer that was meant to be the sump, similar to a stacked bin that you would purchase. It didn't really work out that way. The worms just came down here and didn't have any place to live. So I decided to just make it a functioning layer anyway. So that'll be good. That's a little drier and then the uh, the food can drip down here and little baby worms can have their own little party. Uh, see if you can see this on this worm here. But I had talked about some of the trivia that I've uh, been reading in the books and I'm not sure if you can see this like purpley sheen on this worm but apparently that is coming from the mucus that they secrete as they move around. Um, which is also what helps the uh, particles stick together and everything. But he's cold. He's like, put me back. All right. Well, let me put the, the second layer back on. I think this layer can also use a little bit more bedding. And again, I'm just going to grab the stuff off the top that's a little bit drier, incorporate it. A lot of people who are new have a lot of uh, moisture problems. And, uh, you know, it kind of gets going too far before they do something about it. And this is my recommendation, is that as you're going along, go and, you know, try and, if you see it going in the wrong direction as far as moisture goes, do something about it on the way and add a little bit of drier paper or coconut coir so that it can start absorbing um, because the, the moisture you know does get progressive and most of the time in the basement mine will get drier and drier over the winter but I've added some pretty wet food to this bin so it's probably why I'm experiencing a little bit wetter conditions than usual 
All right, I think since we have the leeks on the top level, I don't want to give them any more food, but I do think we can give this lower level a little bit of food. All they've got left are those grape stems and a little bit of uh, whatever grape is left on there. But I think we can, we can pull a spot back here. So I think we can move a little spot over here and give them a little bit of food. So I have some citrus, and some people, you know, don't feed citrus. Uh, but for me, in my case, I have a very established bin here, and this bin has been going for ever. And the good microbes that help break down things like citrus and pineapple and onions are in abundance in this bin. So I don't have a problem with it. My worms go right in there, and the next time I come in here, I will find a nice worm ball in with the citrus. I've got one, two, three, four, like five or six pieces of citrus in here. And basically, um, the problem why some people can't use citrus is because they have a really new bin or a very small bin. Now, this is three 10-gallon totes, and it has all of the good microbes in here, the springtails, the roly-polies, everything in here that this bin needs to process pretty much any kind of material that's, you know, plant-based for the most part, plant or grain. So... In the event of people who have very small bins or uh, very new bins that don't have this ecosystem in the bin, they might have a problem, and that's where people start believing that you can't feed this kind of stuff. But if your bin is six months old, I would not have any problems feeding, uh, giving you the advice that you can feed citrus and onions and things like that in moderation. Now, there's a couple of pounds of worms spread across three 10-gallon totes here. If they don't like this situation in this environment with this citrus right now, they can go somewhere else. They have that option. If you have a really small bin and you feed something like this, they can't get away from it, and that could cause problems. But in my case, we definitely have more than enough um, bike microbes and enough surface area for these worms to get away from it if they don't like it. And as I said before, I don't have any problems feeding citrus. All right, let's put the next layer up. All right, so we had a little problem with gnats on this layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to top this up with a lot of bedding. And that way it should keep most of those flying insects away and uh, prevent them from hanging out in here and breeding. So that was three big big handfuls of the bedding material. Now this is my prepared bedding. I have videos on that and you can tell that it's a little bit degraded already because it's been sitting in the bin um, waiting for this opportunity to start working. So this should, you know, this looks like a lot of material to add to a bin, but it's a pretty recently um, refreshed bin, so it's got a long ways to go, probably another four or five months. So this will be totally fine. They will go ahead and eat this. All right, guys, well, this bin does have its own playlist. I will link that below, and then I'll put the video that was previous to this up above. If you like this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button, and if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring the bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.